This video is a uh, narrated speed paint for a drawing which I created uh, last year, I think it was November, called Hollywood Freaks on the Hollywood Scene. So I'm just going to get the, um, the unnarrated speed paint here so I can comment on it. Right away you can see this is pretty fast. Um, I might have been a bit too aggressive with the uh, parameters there when I compiled the whole video into this, but anyway you can see right now I'm just working on the character's jacket and his waistcoat. What the hell? Oh, I apologize. I'm a fool. Um, I apparently played a test video instead of the actual thing. This should be the actual thing. But, uh... Yeah, you can see I'm just working on the characters. You know what? Need to enable the cache. That command that I just typed in should take about 5 megabytes for the cache, so that the video plays somewhat well on this uh, slow, unreliable connection. The India Whiskey Michael driver in OpenBSD is not uh, the best driver I've ever seen. Just wait for that a bit. There we go. Anyway, back to what I was saying, this first bit is just me working on the, um, on the character's waistcoat and jacket. Here you can see that after I've gotten that done, I have, uh, moved on to, oh dear god, does this thing not have any keyframes in it? Anyway, I can work with it, but, uh, you can see here after I've gotten done with his waistcoat, I've moved on to his jacket. And, uh, that layer called Shart, not, not his jacket, his shirt, I've moved on to his shirt. Anyway, you can see that that's, um, that's a layer called Shart, right there in the corner of the screen. And, uh, I, I have this on difference right now, because that layer is totally white, and that doesn't really, uh, facilitate checking to see where it ends, which is what I want to do. Okay, good. This is still taping. Okay, let's uh, continue this. You can see that I've trimmed his shirt a bit, and um, now it's just a matter of adding his tie. And the collar. That makes a bit of a difference. Here I'm adding the pockets. You can see that the way I did that is I just traced the pocket. And then I just took the little ellipse tool and, um, uh, subtracted where the actual part of the pocket where you put stuff in is the actual, uh, aperture of it. Just deleted that and I filled in what remained with, uh, this color you see here. Why am I describing all this crap like that? The viewer can probably figure that stuff out. Really, I should use these videos to, uh, highlight my own failures. Good case of that is here, where, um, 
think that I made the character's nose a bit too triangular here. Looks kind of uh, crappy, I think. But I don't know. Uh, just some feedback on that would be nice because pretty much the only feedback I've gotten for this drawing has been, uh, Hey, it looks like the character's uh, wearing a paper jacket. Which I agree with. The drawing at this point, um, almost reminds me of the little, uh, Life's Good mascot, uh, Jake. I just thought that was kind of funny. Just adding the character's eye lines there, and now his, uh, hand, which, my god, the way I drew his hand there is way too geometrical and regular. Like, I'm... I'm looking at my hand here right now, and, uh, yeah, my fingers are not that straight. What you're seeing there is my, uh, is my actual handwriting. Yeah, it's not the most readable in the world. Uh, unless you actually get to be familiar with the, um, the way I draw characters, which, uh, if you've ever used a Palm Pilot, that should look extremely familiar, because, uh, well, it's Palm Pilot graffiti, basically. Um, I don't actually remember if that's a case of convergent evolution, or I just like the Palm Pilot style, so I copied it. Anyway, the, whatever happened, it happened years ago, and I don't really remember. So, that was kind of redundant. Because I had said that I don't remember. And I'm slipping. There, I'm just adding his uh, waistcoat, and you can see that I have this on the uh, subtract mode over here. That's just so I can see uh, how far his jacket goes off of his uh, torso there. Well, I just happened to pause it here. Um, if I get any comments which I'm expecting about this, then I'm, I'm, I'm probably just going to burst into flames or something. Uh, what this actually is, is um, one of my favorite programming languages is called APL. That name is derived from the phrase a programming language, which is the title of a book which specifies uh, basically an alternative to mathematical notation. Anyway, this was in the 60s or 50s, I think the book was written. And then in the 1960s, uh, an actual programming language is created using this specification. And I quite like the result. a bit less muffled here, because I can tell it sounds kind of crappy. Okay, that should be better. Anyway, back on to what I was saying. This, uh, glyph you see on the screen is, um, the common character of APL. When you put this on a line, everything after that, uh, from left to right, is considered a comment. Which I think is kind of funny because, uh, everything else in APL is right to left. What you saw there is, um, I just used, ink I just used Inkscape to trace it. Because I really didn't want to spend the time on, um tracing it myself. It's not laziness, it's just that uh, Inkscape does a fine job most of the time, and 
Yeah. Here's an exception. I'm personally not a big fan of the way it uh, traced my tech there. I don't think that looks great. This is just um, a little joke I made because I, I saw the way I'd uh, drawn this so far and it, and it reminded me of um, Cold War era uh, PSA posters. Uh, the loose lips sink ships type of stuff. Stand by. <coughs> anyway, and I just thought, huh, what's, what's something stupid I could put here that isn't even a parody, it's just dumb. And I thought, hey, maybe I should make it a bit of a parody. You know, the the whole con man thing kind of fits in. And, uh, I could say, you know, uh, stealing secrets or something. And I just threw the, threw the toilet in there for, uh, shits and giggles. Didn't mean for that to be a pun, but, eh. And then that stupid uh, weed eaters thing is just to make it uh, totally idiotic. Here I'm just adding the uh, the labels for the discs, trying to make those look decent. You can see there I had to redraw the, uh, the character's nose because I didn't like the way I'd drawn that before, so. Uh, I ended up actually going back in and fixing it. Which is funny because I don't remember doing that. This is just a case of OBS being a piece of crap. Um, I use the X, I use the X Monad, the tiling window manager. OBS doesn't like it. Um, uh, so whenever I tell OBS, hey, track Gimp, track Gimp here, this, uh, this, this one window, and Gimp decides to act stupid and open a new window, uh, OBS doesn't track the window I'm on right now, no. OBS tracks the new window which has gone into the background and I can't even see. That's the reason you occasionally get this menu on the screen, which... Sorry, there's not really anything I can do about that. Luckily, that disappears whenever I tab over to OBS and I see... Oh my god, it hasn't been recording anything for the past hour. Well, that sucks. And, uh... To make that even funnier, I often live stream stuff, so... Anyone who tunes into my live stream is going to see just this menu and my cursor moving around like this, which sounds uh, terribly boring if you ask me. So maybe it's no wonder that no one watches my live streams. Just adding some shading here, which is uh, actually one of my favorite things to do. Stand by. <coughs> oh no, I forgot to pause it. Anyway, the reason I like doing shading is, uh... That's not really, um... A case of something where references help. Shading you can absolutely do without references if you have uh, the shape of the object in your mind and you can visualize that in three dimensions. If you want to shade that in three dimensions, then uh, if you want to shade that, what you have to do is you have to visualize the object three dimensionally. Uh, 
viewed from where your light source is. And then just add the add the highlights to whatever you see from that point of view. And then you add the shadows to the opposite. Oh my god, Gimp is being a piece of crap again. Actually, it's not totally Gimp, it's also OBS. You can see I'm just adding some, uh, some fur there, which I actually kind of like doing that. Surprisingly, because it's fairly tedious. Here I'm just adding the character's uh, arm because I, you know, I, I thought, hey, how'd that actually look? And I realized, oh my god, you'd be able to see his arm, wouldn't you? So now I'm just adding some folds to make it look more like fabric. That smiley you just saw is a reference to uh, Halfquake which I highly recommend playing. Um, specifically, my favorite game in the series is Half Koi Came In, which might not surprise you, uh, given the color scheme. Just adding some more folds here. Um, some point during this, I asked one of my correspondents you know, hey, I'm going to be uh, uploading this soon. Oh. Anyway, I'm going to pause it there until I get to what I just said all about. Anyway, I uh, sent this to one of my correspondents, and I asked, uh, hey, do you see anything terribly wrong with this? And he told me that, you know, stuff lacks folds, and there should be more folds, so he... Uh, sent me a photograph as an example, and I, I realized, you know, oh shit, I dress in a, I, I, I wear a dang jacket all the time, I should know this, man, I feel like an idiot, so uh, I thanked him, and then I went on to fix it. Anyway, what you're seeing here is, uh, these lines look ugly as sin, but they have a purpose. Uh, those are the stress lines on the fabric. That's where the actual folds go, so, uh, it's a bit easier for me to, uh, just shade above and below those. Well, you'll see here. There, I'm just doing the, uh, the actual shading, where that, uh, fa where that fabric goes concave. And then on the convex bits, I add some highlights. Obviously, when it's not vertical, you can't, or obviously when it's not parallel to the, uh, light source, you can't do that, but when it is parallel to the light source, you get a pretty nice shortcut there. You don't really have to think about how the uh, stuff actually looks. And that's apparently the end of the video. So, um, I'll pull up the actual drawing here so you can see the finished product. Okay, here we go, and uh, you can see that kind of ugly border there, there we go. Uh, th there is some stuff which I, it's not that I even forgot to put it in the video, I just don't know what happened. Uh, I guess I forgot to add those clips in, and now I feel like a tool because this video is going online, and people are going to see that mistake, but whatever. 
maybe if people see that mistake, then um, that will prevent me from making it again in the future. So that'd be nice. So uh, don't hesitate to ridicule my failure there. Anyway, I'll zoom in and show off one of my one of my uh, favorite little details on this, and that's just the um, the fabric texture here. Quite happy with that, especially with this. I think that looks pretty good. But uh, I'd, I'd I'd very much like to hear your thoughts about that. If you want to uh, put some more time into viewing this, then the link to the full thing is in the description. That should be the end of this video. Uh, if I should mention anything else in these videos in the future, then please, for the love of God, tell me.